Welcome to the channel. Today we're doing some film photography and of course we're going to be discussing the two cameras that I've used for this video. Now apparently backstories are a thing and um, yeah everybody needs a backstory so I guess this is going to be the backstory of the two cameras I've used. Sourced like some particularly bad 1980s teen flick we're going to have a tale of two different cameras, one of them with a privileged upbringing and the other one from the bad side of town. Well, kind of. Let me explain. So firstly, we have the Ag for Photo. This isn't got a particularly interesting backstory. This was purchased by my wife for a Christmas present for me and um, it's brand new out of the box. These little cameras have been around for a couple of years now, so I'm not going to do an unboxing and review or anything like that. It's a fixed plastic lens, plastic camera, a typical um, one step up from a disposable camera if you like. It's a handy little shooter if you want to get into film photography. The looks of the camera are clearly styled on something like a Kodak Instamatic camera from the 1960s. Now, the thing is, is this camera going to be all looks and no substance? I guess we'll find out. Having a challenging life from the wrong side of the tracks is this Olympus AF-10 XB. And I'll explain how it came about this camera. This little camera was heading for landfill when I intervened. Basically it was left behind by a colleague at work. Uh, he'd left the business and left a load of bits and pieces in his office which he didn't want anymore and they were we sort of boxed them up kept them for about five years and then it was time he wasn't going to come back for them they were all going to get thrown into uh into the rubbish so i said i'd take the camera and uh, save it from uh sitting in landfill for the next 30 years so to use our teen movie analogy again, will this down on its look, second chance at life camera be better than the brand new Agfa? We'll put them to the test and see how they do. So folks, this is not going to be a scientific test in any way, shape or form. Simply going to take the cameras, load them with film and then head out and do some photography with them. The Agfa stipulates it needs ISO 200 film whilst the little Olympus is quite happy with anything so basically I'm going to put Fujifilm Colour into the Agfa and Kentmere 100 into the Olympus see I did tell you it wasn't going to be scientific so both films are 36 exposure and I'll be honest it has taken a little while to finish them off remember when we did a trip back to Blackpool a couple of months ago well that's when I first started shooting these films and it has taken until a couple of weeks ago to finish them off so I have sent them off to be processed again friends at Photo Hippo in Burnley did the processing so I actually used their download feature on their website so they processed the films and sent me a link to Dropbox or we share well one of those types of things anyway and I was able to download the images straight away and uh, negs arrived a couple of days later and that's a really good system it was very straightforward once i'd paid for the processing the downloads were instantly available really handy service so give them a check out i'm not sponsored by them uh, i don't get any commission or anything like that just think that they're a good service to use so before we look at the images we're going to talk a little bit more about the cameras both cameras have fixed lenses, uh, the Agfa 31 and the Olympus 29mm and I did find that a little bit frustrating to use sometimes. It was neither wide enough to fit a lot in nor close enough like it would have been with something like a 50mm lens. So uh, yeah, they were kind of a halfway house lens wise, handy and fun to, uh, to use. There's something about a point and shoot, you concentrate solely on the composition and just hope the camera gets everything else correct. The Agfa feels very much like the 1960s styled cameras it's based on. It's all plastic, it's a little bit fragile, 
I wouldn't want to drop it. You get what you pay for. This is about £30 new. That works out cheaper in the long run if you're a buyer of disposable cameras. However, and this is the thing, compared to the Olympus, we know this one was free for me. However, they go for about the same money online. I've, I've done some research on, on the likes of eBay and they do turn up regularly at about £30. Now, I've found that this camera is much better featured. It's got more to wind, things like that. Uh, if you like the 90s styling with all the curves and things, then that, that, that's fine. Um, it isn't quite as stylish, perhaps, as the Agfa with the retro styling but it is overall I found now it might have been down to the film as well but I found this was uh, a little bit of a better camera to use sharper the viewfinder is much nicer it's a huge viewfinder there um, and you know just all around a better camera you could see it probably has been a much more expensive camera in its day that said because it's got things like motor wind and a digital display there are more chances on the used market that you're going to pick up one which may have problems so that's something to bear in mind before you all go out and blow your money on a camera like this you've got no warranty it's basically if it doesn't work it's time to throw it away so I'll leave that choice with you whether you go for something new like the little Agfa or the Olympus but first we'll take a look at the photos and maybe that would make your mind up.
nothing to say about the images. I have cropped some of them, but then again, if I was taking photographs on a SLR camera and using a dark room, then I would definitely crop my images so I don't see any problem with not showing you the full frame. Sometimes there are elements, because you've got a fixed lens, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't either get any closer or you can't actually eliminate those things from your shot with a zoom. So I have adjusted some of the frames, uh, cropped them into the images I could, I could envisage in my mind when I was taking them. Um, there's a couple of them where the square crops because when I looked at the image I knew that's what I would do with it in the end. For the colour shots I have slightly enhanced the colours because they were a little bit washed out. Now I'm not sure if that's down to the Fuji 200 film or perhaps it was just when they were scanned after processing. So what did you think of the images? I hope you will leave a comment about your favourite image in the comments below. Certainly do tell me which camera you thought did best. Was it better with black and white film or colour? I may actually revisit this with the Agfa by putting, if I can find some 200 black and white film, put that in and uh, see if those images are better. I did notice quite a lot of grain on the Fuji 200 film. I wasn't particularly a fan of that. I know a lot of people who do film photography absolutely love grain in their images because it indicates that it has been taken on film. But when I used to do photography before, you would try and use 100 film as much as possible to try and eliminate that noise from your images. My personal preference is the Olympus did better with the black and white film. I think some of those images are fantastic. Uh, the colour film... There were a couple of shots there which are, which were good. I, I did like the parrot on top of the amusement arcade, for example. I thought that shot came out really well. Overall, I think the Olympus has a sharper lens, and that was definitely my preference. So, guys, that pretty much wraps this one up. If you have enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do comment down below. Tell me which images you thought were best, or which camera you thought was the better of the two. And, yes, if you're not a subscriber... Hit that subscribe notification button down there and um, also hit the bell so you'll get any notifications of new videos when I upload them. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in another one. Bye for now.